Hello, this is Vance, and this is Thursday, January the 12th, 2017. These are the CL trades for today using the slow man method for price action. First trade of the day, overnight high was 53.50 uh, 53, uh, right here. And uh, the overnight low never did get to the overnight low again. The overnight low started pretty as 52.12. So it was a really... I thought it was going to be like, it looked like an update because overnight it was all the way up. But then uh, we had a pullback and it was really range bound for the rest of the day. So price traded in this range really from a high of, well, 53.50 never got up to there, uh, down to a low of 52.71. So really price was trading within about an 80 tick range. And, uh, you know, kind of like here's the first, here's the top of the, this is the morning right after the morning. We had the strong move up out of the, out of the morning and kind of rotated back down and then kind of stayed in that direction. So, yeah, just an interesting thing. I mean, here's a 30 tick bar again. Notice, uh, you know, the movement where price is moving a little bit greater than 30 ticks. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not going to do this anymore, I guess. But I'm just showing you, like, if you look at the 30 tick bar, you know, if you catch, you know, look at the movement before price pulls back. You know, is it 30 ticks? Does that make a lot of sense? You know, look at this, 30 ticks. You know, like, where are you? And then where do you enter? I mean, that should kind of help you. Look at this. This is a, this channel here is roughly 30 ticks right through here, the top of this channel, you know, where the movement is, you know, 30 ticks. You know. I don't know. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. And if it's not 30 ticks, it's roughly half of that, 15. So, you know, that's kind of what you have to – that's what I use. You know, it seems pretty effective. But uh, anyway, that's beside the point. You can trade whatever you like. I suppose that's the case. Anyway, this first is a, a pullback. We have like a first entry, a second entry right here, right at the open. This is right at 9 o'clock. Um, it uh, really blasted out of here pretty quickly. And unless you were in on this trade pretty early, I mean, it's a very nice setup. You know, you got this double bottom here. It's got room to get out. Look at the, we look at the stop is below the, where support is. You got room to get out to the double tops, and it ran right up here with your first two targets. And then, you know, like, I don't know if you, if you kind of it kind of stalled after 30 ticks but you know that's where the rotation is when it gets above uh, the high the uh, at what the, was current high you can see that price is starting to pull back so now instead of just being shooting straight up here we've got these pullbacks you know we've got these negative bars here and finally we have a uh, right here after it's broken the trend channel we have a uh, price breaks to a new high and certainly this is a, a place that you could have entered now do you enter this you think we're going to continue to go up it doesn't really, I don't know about the first segment, but this segment certainly when a price you know, breaks up, doesn't make that new high and then turns in the other direction. That might be a place to go go short. And if you look at where your, your top stop box is, and even in this one on the strong bar here, that would have probably been the best place if you limited in, the best place to kind of go short. And the uh, thing is that you had to hold on to it. Now, if you went short at uh, 37, let's say, and you know it did price but it pull back to here, to uh, 46, try to go. You would have would have gotten it, and it even hit. It made a low of 21, so it would have gotten your first contract off. You know, at, at 22, pulls back again, retests this high, and doesn't quite get there. I mean, remember if you keep your stop at minus 15, but if you get your first contract off, you typically take you move your stop to break even. We're probably taking you out um, again. It, price is having a difficult time getting up, and finally uh, it fails right at this area. So is this a uh, you know, do we have we have first attempt, second attempt, really a third attempt, and then it fails right here. So, I don't know if you take this trade. I mean, this is support. This is currently what is set up to be support, but uh, you know, but this is where the previous low was. You might want to take that. You might take that trade. I didn't take it. I mean, I there's a reason for it. I was uh, looking at this. I got kind of caught on this trade right here. Um, I thought that we bounced. This is, uh, you know, from this one, there's a first entry, second entry long right here. And I kind of got caught on this. And so I didn't take a full 15 tick stop, but I did get stopped out because it just didn't move up as much as I expected it to. I thought we were going to retest this high. And so I thought there was enough room to get out there. And uh, it didn't. It turned back around. I should have known on this one. I mean, should have. my target should have been here. 
because that's where the first, uh, the second double, this is a lower high right near here. It should have been below that. Had I done that, it would have been better shape. So, but I would have had to limit in. So I wasn't, I wasn't really prepared to do that. So uh, that was a bit of, uh, you know, when you look at it now, it's easy to see. Unfortunately, that's not the case. You see, the other thing is this, is that the trades that, that are break even or the trades that you don't take are the trades that are, are, are mistakes. A lot of times are mistakes. For instance, I didn't take this trade down here. This is right at the open. It's not that I missed it. I wasn't really, I was here. I mean, I saw it open, but I just wasn't ready to pull the trigger. And that's kind of, that was my fault. I didn't have my eyes focused on the screen. I saw this move down. I, I kind of knew that it was. I saw this turn around. But my biggest concern was that where was my, my stop? I mean, instead of looking at this area here, support, I was looking at this area down here. That's the overnight. You might not need to use that. So I was fooling around, seeing where I could enter. And by the when when price opened right at the bell, it kind of took off. And there was just no way to get it in. By the time I really focused in on it, it was up here. And by that time, it was too long. And I didn't want to take a trade as it was heading up in this direction because I didn't know how I was going to react to here. As it turns out, even if I would have gotten in late, it would have, it would have I would have been able to get my at least my first contract off. So... Was that a mistake? I don't think so. I just wasn't ready. I mean, the point was is that, but I should have been. And so that's kind of a lesson to learn uh, in that regard. Um, I was, uh, you know, having this short here, being in the short in this place, it's it's a relatively, it's a little bit more aggressive trade. And I, you can't really fault it on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, this price, you know, it starts to stack up here. This is a strong bar. Uh, you, so you get in at 37, but the thing is that if it gets ahead 10 ticks and you break it to break even, that might be the case. Uh, you probably wanted to get in where it's more closer to the tops, give yourself a little bit more room. So where's the top of this? If you would have put your support of your, your resistance here, if resistance is across these tops right here, then you probably are better suited to see this. But uh, the reason I didn't really like the, like these ones, like when price turned around, this is a pretty strong bar here, and this one too, is because I couldn't uh, put it where my stop was above the daily high. You know, I just, I couldn't limit in on this. And you don't have this, you know, I mean, you don't have this bar. I mean, you have these strong bull bars coming out of here. These are pretty strong. And how do you limit in when you got a strong against a strong bar like that? It really can't. So you can't fault that trade. Um, and where's your target? If your target is here, is this the double bottom? The target should be, you know, where there's the most touches. And so this is where your target should be. So the only way you can limit in is you limit in right here. And that is that really takes a leap to do that. I mean, you got to be quick on the draw to doing that. And I just I just wasn't like I was, I was behind it a little bit today. Price makes his first move down. And I, I was here for this. So price makes this move down. You see you have a, a pullback. Let's say you call it the first pullback fail, second pullback, another strong move down. Now, I didn't get this trade either. Um, again, it, it kind of stacked up very quickly. And where's your target? Well, your target is down here. It's, it's You have to break this previous low in order to get to your full target off if you enter it right at this point in time. And I wasn't really I – I didn't see it as that. So – that was a trade that I passed on. Uh, makes it all the way down to this area. Now, it breaks the trannel. I mean, you have this little pullback here. Pulls down here. This is your first pullback. And now you've got a second pullback right here. So, really, it's, you know, and if you look at entering in at this, t at this point in time on this bar, you see, you can see this is like first entry and the second entry on this one right here. You know, on this little doji right here is the second entry. And your stop is, if you if you enter in, your stop would be below these areas right here. So this is overnight uh, or previous a previous bounce area. See this bounce area right here? Now, but it only went 15 ticks before it turned around. Now, when it turned around, if you can see, this is an area. So now you've got your double bottom right here. This is first, uh, this is a, a bottom. You could argue that this is a double bottom too. But you've got your first pull around, price moves up. Pulls back down here, double bottom right here. So you have really like a triple bottom, basically. Almost you could consider a triple bottom with the target being here. So this is also a second entry long. First entry pullback, second entry long. If you limit it in, it gives you enough room to get out. Your stop is below where support is. 
you know, where the previous support is. And as a result, this trade went to target. And in fact, um, could have gotten, I don't know if he, I don't know if he really made it. Yeah, it's both targets. First target, second target. 30 ticks. Failure at this point, you know, first pullback, fails, second point, second entry long right here, Ooh, right here. Now, I don't know, this is, uh, this was a little challenging one, and I'll tell you, it's challenging, I mean, it does break the trend channel, but it turns around awfully quickly. Um, yeah, we have two moves down, first move, second move, second entry long, mm, I was hesitant on that one, especially when it pulled back, so, but you could have taken it, would have worked for, for at least your first contract, it was good enough for, you know, a scalp. Price gets up to this area, and then it turns around. So this is the second entry short here. I don't know about taking the first time around. Pulls down, gets up, it tries again. Another short now. Do you take a short on this one? I marked it in green. Uh, yeah, I guess you could. I mean, as long as your stop is relatively high up here, I guess you're okay. And, you know, your target's going to be in this area. Is this the new area? And it broke through, kept going. First entry, second entry. Now, this is a problem that I had. I this is another trade that I I didn't I lost on this trade. Price breaks it breaks the trend channel. First entry, second entry. My stop is below here. You can see that. My target is below these tops here. So I've got that set up. I went long on this and it failed. And that's it. There's I mean there's I think it was a pretty decent setup. Maybe you can make this argument that the bar wasn't quite complete maybe i should have given more attention to the area that like it failed here i didn't have this this metal this metal channel in here so i can't really use that as an excuse so but i was thinking that it would really retest and rotate and test this area right here and as it was it didn't it didn't get up there and so this is a trade that i i lost on I lost on this trade, and it really does break through this area. What was previously support breaks through this, but just overshoots it. And so when price overshoots from this area, first entry fails, second entry right here. I mean, yeah, this is a bit of a pullback, but it breaks through. It doesn't stay down there and springs right out of there. So, I mean, this is, and your stop is where? Below here. So this, I like this trade. Um, I liked it. Uh, it moves its way up. It pulls. It does pull back. You know, but uh, it was safe, and then you know, it like, moves up to the other side of the channel. When it gets to the other side, we have another failure. Now, this is a measured move, moves up the first time, moves up the second time to here. Do you take a trade on this? It bounced based on the channel. Well, we do have these rejection bars here. Not a tremendous amount. You know, price moves up and then moves down. I think this is some type of candlestick pattern or something like they call it uh i don't know like a i know this is a, this is a tombstone <laughs> it's called a tombstone that is but uh, a tombstone doji but it's also at the top of this channel so it's really rejection so it kind of looks like a, a failure you know and that's what i mean i don't i don't trade candlestick patterns like that but it, that's what it looks like on the here tick chart price turns around um it takes a while to work out and so you could have taken this trade i mean looking at challenging the bottom side of the channel where does it go Let's take a look. Breaks up, pulls back to here, continues down further, and just rotates at this point in time. So it doesn't quite get there, you know, from where your entry was. Your entry is like came back, took out your entry, but you certainly got your first target off, you know, first target. And when I, I drew this channel in here after the fact, so you can see this channel, it does kind of hold, you know, like, I mean, I know that Mac has a favor, favors like doing that. And if you look at the measured, the measuring areas, this top, you look at the bottom. This is almost right dead center, and so it kind of respected that for the rest of it. And it's about it's roughly 30 ticks, you know, from here to uh, you know 96 to the top here. It's uh, yeah, it's 20 20 ticks. So it's like 20 um, 24 ticks. So almost 30 ticks right to the tops. So you know it's 30 tick rotation here through this area, um, and that's pretty much it. If there's anything more to that? Uh, <clears throat> As again, it's kind of it was a range day. Where could you have identified it? Well, when you have this failure here at the top, I mean, you can think that maybe it's. In, I did I try to put in a channel through here. I don't know if there's a. You'd say that this is maybe a bit of a channel. Yeah, that's not bad. But I mean, for the tops, anyways. So this is Vance. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.